long things. Oh. I think we've got a little more superior to do. We definitely got inferior. 90. Oh, thanks. Oh. My name's Catherine Sinclair. I'm a head and neck surgeon in New York. I mainly specialise in surgical diseases of the thyroid and parathyroid glands. The radio frequency is a truly minimally invasive approach for benign thyroid nodules. I only offer it to people with biopsy proven benign thyroid nodules and those people need to have had two biopsies preferably within the preceding five years that show that the nodule is benign. Um, for those patients, it's a procedure that potentially that avoids them a neck scar, definitely allows them to return to function much more quickly than after open surgery, and in addition has, if not lower, at least the same risk of complications as surgery, but lower uh, risk of needing to be on long-term thyroid hormone after the procedure, which is a big concern for many of my younger patients who are not taking any other medications at the current time. Three main ones would be avoidance of long-term thyroid hormone supplementation, which in the studies seems to be rates of 1% or less, as opposed to surgery where it's much higher. Avoidance of a neck scar, which is a big issue for many young patients, who don't have any skin creases where the scar can be hidden in, uh, and potentially, again, um, avoidance of long-term calcium problems uh, because the parathyroid glands are probably at less risk of injury, I'd say, with this procedure than with open surgical procedures. The type of patient that may be suitable for radiofrequency would be someone that has a benign thyroid nodule, not cancerous, has had two, at least two biopsies of that nodule showing that, and who is having symptoms from that nodule. And those symptoms may range from hoarseness of the voice, difficulty swallowing, perception of a neck mass and a visible neck mass in the, in the neck, which is causing them issues with lying flat or with exercising, and sometimes even people with shortness of breath. And these people are the ones that I think are most suited for radiofrequency ablation. In addition, some characteristics of the nodule probably make people more or less favourable, and people with solid nodules that are not hugely vascular are particularly favourable candidates, but we're not ruling out people who have cystic or more vascular nodules either. When my patients ask me about radio frequency, they're very interested in the long-term data. And uh, they're very interested in what's the chance that the nodule will regrow and that they will require another procedure with time. And I think the answer to that question uh, depends a little bit on the nodule size and the characteristics of the nodule. And at the moment, I'm telling them there's a one in four to one in five chance that they will need to have a second procedure if their nodule is less than four centimetres may be higher than that if their nodule is more than four centimetres. Again, kind of based loosely on data that we have from overseas. Um, in addition, they're very interested in uh, the potential need for long-term thyroid hormone supplementation and how that differs from open surgery. And I think, as I mentioned, that it is much, much, there are much lower rates with radiofrequency, which is very pleasing for them. And they're also very interested in the risk of nerve injury to the voice box. And at the moment, I tell them that it is not more risky than open surgery, probably less risky. And again, as we collect our data in the United States, hopefully it will be comparable to what's come from overseas. And we will indeed see that it is less risky um, to the nerves of the voice box, which leads patients to have less risk of hoarseness of the voice.